The rules of collars for dollars at NYPD's Transit District 34 were clear. Cops who arrested black men were rewarded with more overtime. And now, a now retired Pierre Maximilian writes in an explosive declaration filed Monday in a discrimination lawsuit brought by St. Ed Sergeant Edwin Raymond and three other cops. The declaration is one of the latest developments in a long-running case brought by black and Hispanic cops who charged they were forced to arrest more black and Hispanics than other groups. They were treated harshly and denied promotions if they refused. The lawsuit alleges Asian, Jewish, and white people known as soft targets were not to be slapped in cuffs. All cops in that district were to fill a collar quota. But black and Hispanic officers who didn't meet expectations were treated more harshly by then commanding officer Constantine Tashashis Maximilian Wright. We were taught by Tashashis closest lieutenants that we could not give summonses to what they called as soft targets. Maximilian writes in his declarations, the soft targets they were referring to were white, Asian, or Jewish people. Instead, it was emphasized that we need to stop black males. It was emphasized that we needed to stop male blacks. Those were the ones Tashasis wanted in jail. I can't say this man's name, but whatever. Maximilian 49 retired in 2015, saying he could no longer endure Tashasis racist retaliation. He writes that when he refused to follow those orders, he was reprimanded. His overtime was stopped and he was assigned only to transporting prisoners. He writes that he tried to raise warning bells about the quota system with NYPD chiefs, the Department of Investigation, and the police unions, but no one acted. The utter disregard for civilians of color and their ability to treat them like animals has made me second guess who I was actually serving in the NYPD, he writes. Tashash has created this racial divide within the department. He rewarded the white officers and punished the minority officers. Black and Hispanic cops in general were punished more severely for failing to meet the quotas. The supervisors would place the minority officers in punishment posts by themselves or deny vacation leave or deny overtime, change our shifts, give us bogus command disciplines, yell at us in roll call or give us poor evaluations, he writes. On the other hand, according to Maximilian's declaration, when white officers didn't meet the collar quotas, they were treated with kid gloves. They would get a pass from command, he writes. They would write it off as a bad month and place them in areas with partners who were extremely aggressive so that they could make their arrest quota. Tashashis is still on the job and was promoted to deputy inspector in 2016. The mayor and the, the uh, commissioner say that there aren't any quotas. Uh, that's a lie. Uh, there are definitely quotas. There are quotas for everything. He said 20 and 1. 20 something says, one arrest. That's what the union is backing up. The Bronx trustees. So. It's sad, you know, here they are, establishing quarters with their department. So what they're doing now is you have a lot of officers who are looking for arrest at the end of their tour. Let's say you finish your tour at 3 p.m. 2.30, 2.45, 3 o'clock. You'll hear it go over the radio. Car stop here, another two minutes. Car stop here, another two minutes. I stop this person, I stop that person, because they know. Every 15 minutes after your tour ends, it's overtime. It becomes you're just stopping people who you know aren't doing anything, and then you're frisking them. You know, pretty much turns you upside down and violates your rights. People who might commit the crime, I'm forced to write them. Sometimes I don't know if they committed it or not. There might be a beer right next to them. Don't know if it's theirs. But I'm under these time constraints. I'm running out of time, and I gotta make the quota. And if I don't, I get retaliated against. It's either me or him. Your back is to the wall. Because if you don't come back with what they ask for, you may be subject to some kind of retaliation.
he came in and I said, you know what? We really can't produce crime much more. He said, what we can do, though, is get some of our people who aren't shipping in to go to some locations where we're having problems and, and give them the business. Where rightfully they should. And that's all we're asking you to do. That's all. That's all. Uh, and if we do that, everyone chips in. It, it, it's fine. It's really non-negotiable. But if you don't do it now, I'm going to have you work with the boss to make sure it happens. He said, for those that aren't chipping in, you get thrown on the foot post in a bad area. And you're going to be there to give him the business, he says. And if you still don't do it, you're going to be put in a car with a sergeant. The same thing is going on everywhere. That's just nonsense. Quotas is what it was called a few years ago by the police department. Now they say it in other words. They just don't say it that clear. Now it's called activity goals. I'm not reaching the quota. <laughs> That's the reason they switched my squad. The commander took me out of the holiday squad, so I wouldn't have any holidays off for this year with my family. You could do amazing work for years. In those one or two months when you bring in low activity, you're the worst cop ever in the police department. And they'll come after you. That's the way the police department is. The way I think about it is, say a fireman is told by his supervisor, we need you to put out 15 fires this month. And if you don't put out 15 fires, you're gonna get penalized. So if he doesn't find 15 fires to put out, is that his fault? It's not, but the fireman might even go out there and start setting fires, causing fires, you know? Just so he's not penalized or looks bad. You know, and that's kind of what the police officers are doing. Find something, you might not see nothing. You're supposed to be visible, you might not see anything, but you go hunting, like bounty hunting for an arrest. Locking up some, some old guy, some homeless guy, finding somebody who's riding a bicycle on the sidewalk, who's spitting, and you bring him in. The problem is when you go hunting, when you pull any type of numbers on a police officer to perform, we are going to go to the most vulnerable. The most vulnerable. Of course, we're going to go to LGBT community, we're going to go to the black community, we're going to go to those people that have no vote, that have no power. If we start doing what we're doing in midtown Manhattan, a phone call to the mayor's office is going to be made. That's going to be the end of it. We're the predators, they're the prey. The worst thing you can have is a police officer that needs an arrest for the month. So you're all minorities. How does that make you feel? It's, it's horrible. This is something coming from the top that trickles its way down, and this is why we're all here today. We first interviewed Officer Edwin Raymond last month. He says he's been recording conversations with NYPD officials for the past two years in an effort to prove alleged quotas and retaliation against cops who don't rack up numbers. They're breaking the law. Raymond's claims elicited this expletive from the police commissioner. Bullshit. Bullshit is my response to that. The commissioner insists his policies are focused on the quality of arrests and summonses, not the quantity. The officer's attorney. Is the commissioner lying? Yes. Commissioner Bratton is lying. How can you prove this? I can prove it with testimony, with recordings, with documents. All he wants us to do is go out there and lock them up. They told us it's, it's, it's easy to get numbers out here because you, you work in this type of community. Are you arresting for stuff that you shouldn't be arresting for? Well, that's why we're here. We don't do it. We refuse. And because of that, we are retaliated against. Because you're not harassing people, you're being punished. You know? And it, it doesn't make for a great work environment because they want you to harass people. The lawsuit claims minority officers are punished more severely than white cops for failing to meet quotas. The city denies it. And the community are suffering the most. Because? Because the pressure, because the quota. Because the police department is like a whore pretending to be a lady. That's what they are. Are you worried? You know, this is a big step to come forward like this. It's not easy. It's not easy. Um, we are the enemies. We are the people that nobody talked to. The culture of the department, we are the rats. That's how they call us. They are, we are the rats that speak out. It takes a lot of guts from a rat to stand where we stand, knowing that our career are basically over the second we speak against such a mafia. Because the police department is a mafia. It's a, it's a big organized mafia. Again, the police commissioner declined to go on camera to address the allegations. The city has asked a judge to dismiss portions of the lawsuit, claiming the officers haven't begun to prove a case either for quotas or racial discrimination. Because uh, I kept reading articles all down through the years, going way back to the 1910 and whatnot, uh, looking at old newspapers and whatnot, headlines, talking about police brutality. And I'm saying, 
but I call law enforcement, call police. You know, uh, that do I have a problem with police? I mean, there are police everywhere, some type of police. Sometimes, some places, police don't carry guns, but they are called police. You know, the word police comes from politic. It deals with people uh, being polite. That comes from police. Police are polite. That's what they're supposed to be. But now a race soldier is a person who practices racism, but they will put on any kind of uniform or any kind of front because they are deceptive in order to impress you that they are something other than what they are. So a lot of white supremacists go under the label of police so that when they do something they shouldn't do, you say, well, the police did this, the police did that, the police came here and tore up my house, and all like that. Well, now, if that person is a white supremacist, a white supremacist doesn't have a label other than white supremacist. And uh, when they are armed and in uniform like that, they are race soldiers. That's how I invented that term. So I say, oh, that's a suspected race soldier that tore up my living room looking for drugs, all right, under false pretenses. That's a suspected race soldier. I can't even call him a race soldier because that's name calling. But I'll say he's suspected. Suspected by whom? He or she. Suspected by me. Because the way they went about doing it, they acted the same way that the white supremacists would act. And a white supremacist would put on any kind of uniform, a soldier's uniform, you know, of any kind, of, of any so-called nation. All right, they'll put on a doctor's uniform. They'll put on anything, a teacher's uniform. They'll uh, act like they're a, a member of a religious group, uh, Christianity, uh, Judaism. Hinduism, uh, isms that you never heard of, uh, Islam, a white supremacist will pretend to be anything. And they will definitely pretend to be a police officer, a person who is a, a political arm, a, a arm of the polit a political, a political establishment with the correct intentions, protecting and serving, all right? in a constructive manner. That's what a police officer is. So you don't want to get police officers mixed up with race soldiers. That's two different breeds all together. But a race soldier, definitely, since they are licensed to carry a gun and kill people, they definitely want to get in that type of uniform and go around pretending that they are police officers when really they are race soldiers. They're carrying out the mission of racism. Because the only purpose for even being a member of a race is to practice racism. And what is racism? Racism is mistreating people on the basis of color and or non-color. That's all it is. It's not good for anything else. That's why in the code it says black people should never say that they're members of a race. We're forced to say that we're members of a race, but under oath, if you're asked to give your opinion of your status you'll, and say what's on your mind, you should say, in order for the record to be straight, I'm not a member of a race. I don't ever intend to be a member of a race because being a member of a race means you're going to practice racism. And racism means mistreating people on the basis of color and or non-color. Yes, sir. And I don't intend to do that. But the white supremacists have forced me to say that I'm a member of a race. I've never been a member of a race, if I tell the truth. Okay. But they've made me that, and they made me say that. Why? Because it's to their advantage. If you do not understand white supremacy, which is racism, what it is and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you, only confuse you, only confuse you.